morning, Covenant Church, and welcome to Covenant Church Online. Pastor Mike is starting week one of his new sermon series, Strategic Advantage, and we're excited that you've joined us. But before we get started, we have a few announcements for you. First, we wanted to let you guys know, with the July 4th holiday coming up, that Monday, July 5th, the church offices will be closed, and then on Wednesday, July 7th, there will be no activities on campus here at Covenant Church. Next, on Tuesday, July 13th, the Joy Group is going to be hosting their next lunch. For the menu and to get yourself signed up, get on the church app or on our church website at covenantchurch.church. On July 19th through July 21st, we are going to host a basketball and a dance camp here at Covenant. This camp is for boys and girls ages 6 to 11. The cost of this camp is going to be $30, so you need to make sure to get on our church app or on the church website, covenantchurch.church, and get them signed up today. the storm that surrounds me just one word the darkness has to retreat just one touch I feel the presence of heaven just one touch my eyes were open to see my heart can't help but believe There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a mountain that He can move Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't do Just one word You heal what's broken inside me Just one word, and you revive every dream. Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that. power like the power of Jesus let faith arise let all agree there's no power like the power of Jesus I will believe for greater things there's no power like the power of Jesus let faith arise let all agree there's no power like the power There's not a mountain. 
Hey, Covenant Church family uh, online, coming to you again today from Ryan's office. Uh, we would be in the sanctuary and we probably will be back next week, but we're having Bible school over here this week and uh, it's been amazing. Last night we were over here, uh, I'm actually doing this on a Tuesday afternoon, and so Monday night we were over here for Bible school. I had over 300 kids here uh, and over 100 volunteer adults helping, so it was it's pretty awesome. So anyway, but that's the point of why I'm coming to you today from here. Uh, but I just want to thank you so much as usual for continuing to to tune in with us because I really believe it's important for you guys to stay abreast of what I think the Lord's doing. Uh, he has, God has a strategy and, and he's given us a vision for this year of how things are supposed to play out. And I just think it's really important for us to, to stay involved, uh, stay in tune even if we're not here with what God's doing. So even if you're if you're one of those people who hadn't yet come back because of, of COVID uh, nervousness, uh, that's fine. I appreciate you staying involved. Or if you're on vacation somewhere this week, uh, I know this isn't quite the same as, as our live services, but it's it's still, you're getting the same message. You're getting the same instruction. And I think it's really, really important. Uh, last week we had more like a family type, uh, just like a, a day where we felt like we just needed to have a conversation with the family. I had been gone for a couple of weeks and really felt refreshed and renewed and all those things and just kind of kind of sense. Last week was supposed to be a, a week where we got everybody kind of back in tune with what we were doing, what the focus has been for the year, the vision that God had given us for the year. Our 2021 vision is you can't sit this one out. And, and I think that's very important. I felt like God really s cemented that word in my heart last maybe September. Uh, that that this was going to be a year where everybody need to really engage, and, and I know that's hard because uh, for me it's been hard because I see so many people, uh, which I'm obviously not talking to you because you're paying, you're you're online, but we we've had so many people in our church that, uh, and I wouldn't say hundreds because we're we're growing like crazy, but I I would say a number of families that have yet to re-engage after the pandemic they. I think sometimes we can get in the habit of, of being at church, which is not necessarily a, a great thing. I think we shouldn't necessarily be a habit to be here, but but I do think we can get also in the habit of not being here. And one of the things that really concerns my heart in this season is the people that, um, that have kind of disengaged and aren't getting the instruction like you are, not, not getting the instruction like the people who are here every week are getting. And so while the, the, the title of our vision for the year is you can't sit this one out, sadly for me, I think some people are. And I'm not saying that in a judgmental way. I'm saying that in a way of great concern. I feel like this is just a time when God is pouring his spirit out and teaching us so many things, so many strategies as we move forward of how the enemies at work. And uh, this particular series I'm getting ready to do is, is very much one of those moments where I believe God is 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 talking to us about uh, engaging. The scripture for the year out of Daniel 9 verses 2 and 3 was a, a story where Daniel was actually reading the word of the Lord. He was reading the, the book of Jeremiah and it, he noticed in the book that uh, that Israel had been 
and been in captivity for 70 years. And the book of Jeremiah gives a hint that, that after that 70 year window of captivity in Babylon, uh, that he would come in and, and rescue Israel. And Daniel saw that in the book and when he was reading the book of Jeremiah. And instead of just sitting down and sitting down and saying, well, God's getting ready to come rescue us. The Bible says in Daniel uh, uh, 9 verse 3 that he turned his face toward God. In other words, he, he, he wanted to participate in the thing that God was doing. Why, why I think that's important for us and what does that have to do with the vision for the year is simply this. Is because I, I believe God is doing something special and I believe God is pouring his spirit out and I believe he's going to raise up a remnant in this season. And, and it's not a time for us to say, I'm going to go sit down and wait for him to do that. No, I think the people that he wants to pour himself into and pour himself through are people that are going to turn their face toward God in this season. Like Daniel did in that day, he wanted to be used of God in the things of God. And, and I think we have that same opportunity. So anyway, uh, the first two things that we talked about this year, we've had four, basically four series, uh, series that we've done, uh, probably starting last November. Uh, the first two were very, very, uh, corrective. The second two were very instructive. Uh, the first one was us learning how to trust in right provisions as they're, they're, they're corrective by nature, but, but I also believe God has, has got a, a plan he's building upon. In other words, I feel like he needed to to correct some things in us before he could speak some things to us. And so the first thing I believe he tried to correct was us trusting in him to be our provision, to be our provider, to be our Jehovah Jireh. And after we got through with that series, the next, which was also kind of corrective by nature, in other words, he's trying to correct something that we might have been missing, is that he encouraged us to get into right kind of worship, uh, to have our hearts uh, and our passions to be on him. And, and I think that's what he corrected in that second series. So after those two corrective things took place, the third series uh, that we, we went into this year is, is one where we learned how to fight the right battles, to, to fight the right thing. I think it's, it's, a, it's a tendency of the body of Christ and people in general, uh, when we get upset or bothered by something, we, we, we tend to turn our attention toward people and things uh, when God is really trying to get us to turn our attention toward a heavenly place to fight our battles. So we learned a lot about putting on the armor of God in Ephesians 6, which led us into our next series, which was the last one I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I just finished was out of 2 Chronicles 7, 14, where we actually begin to know our calling. Uh, there's a call for God, for the people of God, uh, to to put ourselves in a right position, to, to be his people who are called by, by his name. Uh, we're, we're called to turn from our wicked ways and to turn toward heaven and and leave our sin behind, uh, not because we're continually being judged for that sin, uh, even though I think we do have we reap what we sow. But the, the the main point I think God was trying to get at was that He needed to clear our minds and hearts, so that we could literally get in a position where we could be in intimate relationship with Him, so that that He can instruct us. And so as we move into this next series, which I believe is really really important. I feel like God's taking us into a place of, of some strategic instruction. Now that he has our attention, now that he's corrected us on our worship uh, and, and, our, and our, our trust, and now that he's corrected us on giving us an identity in himself and teaching us about fighting in the heavenlies, he wants to really, really begin to give us, uh, I think what he's going to reveal in the book of Daniel that we're going to work on these next eight or nine weeks is He's going, to, he's going to show us the strategy of the enemy. I believe the enemy is, is, is well aware that time is short. I, I think if, if we can look at the signs of the times and recognize that, that time is short, then certainly Satan can look at the, the signs of the times and see that time is short. But I, I think what it's caused uh, in him is, is, is almost a desperation. And I think he's battling I think we're in a battle for the next generation of the church. I think we're in a battle for this generation of the church, but I think he set his sights on trying to destroy the next generation. I, I think by that, I mean, I spent 12, 13 years in youth ministry. I spent three years teaching school. I've, I've coached uh, for 18 years in the public school setting. And, and when I look at uh, this next generation of high school, middle school, college kids, I just feel like the enemy just set his sights on them. And, and I believe he thinks if he can destroy that last generation of, of believers, I think he feels like he can do great damage to the church. And that's what, that's what desperate, desperate people do. 
uh, when they get desperate and scared, they try to destroy everything around them. And I think that's what the enemy's doing. So anyway, uh, I, I believe we're living in a season of, dis, of, of deception uh, that could turn into a season of destruction. And so we're going to uh, we're, we're going to trust that the Lord is teaching us some things. Uh, I believe as He reveals this strategy that He wants to reveal to us uh, about how to fight the enemy, I think He's going to teach us some of the ways the enemy is trying to destroy the church. And then our response to that will be to battle against uh, with our strategy, with the strategy of the Lord, with the strategy of the Holy Spirit in us, how to go about defeating the enemy in His strategic planning against us. So now that we know that he's desperate, uh, we, we need to also remind ourselves of what the word says. Isaiah 59, 19 says this, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I, I think we're in that season. The, a, a desperate enemy is coming to try to destroy the church. And he's trying to destroy an entire generation of the church. Well, the Bible says in, in Isaiah 59 that when the enemy comes in like that, that God himself will raise up a standard. And, and I think we're to pick up that standard. We're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're to possess those new mercies and we are to go about the battle uh, We as, as the enemy, uh, as his, his strategy is, is revealed to us, then we set our minds on God and we begin to fight against him. So. So these, these four points I want to make today. We're, we're, we're living, in, with my whole heart, I believe, we're living in a season of deception. There, there are things that the enemy's trying to do to reword the Word of God. There, there are things we're arguing about, uh, honestly. Uh, that, that scripture People have had an understanding of what Scripture has said and meant for 2,000 years. But of late, the Word of, the God, Word of God is coming under attack uh, where people are saying, that ain't what it meant. That's not what it meant. It, he meant this. No, I think God's word is pretty clear. And, and the first way that the enemy will try to deceive us is to get us not to believe that the word of the God, the word of the Lord is true. That's that's the same thing he did with Adam and Eve. He he tried to convince them that what God told them weren't wasn't true. And if he can get us to agree with the enemy against God, against God's word, then the deception is, 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 is fully in place. That's exactly what he did with Adam and Eve. He incurs Eve first to agree with him instead of God. And then she in turn uh, uh, encouraged Adam to participate in that. And then the enemy convinced him to agree with him against God. And, and that broke uh, uh, the covenant that Adam and Eve had with God uh, that that deception. All all the enemy has to do is get you to disagree with what the word of God says, or to be confused about what the word of God says, and he he can deceive you and take you and lead you anywhere. So number one, we're living in a season of deception. Number two, I believe that we're living in a season where the enemy is trying to distract, discourage, and destroy. John ten ten says that the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he said, but I have come that you might have life more abundantly. So there's two alternate voices. We got one voice that's coming to, to kill, to steal, and to destroy, and one that wants to give you life more abundantly. Uh, God is, 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 is raising up a standard right now, but we need to possess that standard. Uh, we, need to, we need to grab a hold of that standard of truth. John 8 says that, we, that if we know the truth, the truth will set us free. In other words, it's, it's not necessarily just the truth that sets you free, but it's knowing the truth that sets you free. And I'm encouraging you in this season to really, really engage. You can't sit this one out. You got to engage. Your kids need it. Your grandkids need it. Your friends need for you to be engaged. Uh, God, last week, uh, last Sunday morning, I was in, in, my, in, in my prayer closet before going out to preach. And the Lord spoke two very important things to my heart. He said to my heart, and I wrote them down, that, that some people are distracted in this season by poverty. And some people are distracted in this season by prosperity. And the devil doesn't care which one he distracts you with. So what, what do I mean by that? I, I believe that there are people that are that are just disengaging from the from the things of God right now because they just feel like they don't they're not worthy, they're not valuable, and and that's poverty. This this sentence of poverty and prosperity has really nothing to do with with finance. It's what you're feeling in your spirit, and I believe the enemy is robbing people of God's voice because he's making them feel like they're less than valuable, and that's poverty. But the other group of people that is, is probably just as dangerous 
are people that are being robbed of the voice of God by their prosperity. In other words, they think they have all they need. We, we, we're, we're almost trained in America to have a mindset that, that I'm independent, I'm an island unto myself, I can make it, I can pull my own self up by my own bootstraps. And I think there are a lot of people in the, in the, in the body of Christ right now that have just become content. And, and I think that's dangerous. I don't think we should ever have a, a, a contentment. I don't think we should ever just be satisfied. In fact, I, I, I pray to God that you get completely dissatisfied with being satisfied. I think you should always have a, a heart of hunger. And I think people who have a heart of hunger that never are satisfied that they know him enough, that are never satisfied that they're deep enough in Christ are the people that God's going to pour himself through. And, and, and they'll be the people that are less distracted and less discouraged and less destroyed in this season. So uh, two things uh, already. It's a season of deception, and we're living in a season where the enemy's trying to distract, discourage, and destroy. The third thing I want you to know is this. We must remember in this season the promises of our God. In this season of deception, uh, we, we have to continue to go back to the word of the Lord and build our hope and life and our trust on the promises of God. Second Corinthians one uh, twenty says this, that all of God's promises are yes and amen to the glory of God. In other words, God is our truth. God is our source. God is, is, is our refuge. In, the, in this season of deception, in this season where the enemy is coming to try to destroy us, trying to rob us of a generation, we're going to get more into that next week and the weeks after that. But the, when, that, when the enemy is coming in this season to try to defeat us, we, we have to tap in to God's word and we have to remind ourselves that all of God's promises are yes and amen and that he is our truth. And so the reason for all of, of that encouragement on, on, the, on that verse is, is, leads me to point number four. If we, if we fall into fear and hopelessness, which I saw a lot of people in last year when we were separate, when, when the, the pandemic was in full force and people were nervous and scared even in some, I, I saw a hopelessness creep into the, into, the, into the eyes and into the mindset of the body of Christ. And God's pulling us out of that. He's saying, listen, you don't have to fear. You don't, you don't have to live a life of hopelessness. I'm, I'm your source. I'm your refuge. I'm your strength. Uh, but I want to remind you that if we fall into a, a, a season of fear and hopelessness, we become easier to deceive and we'll fail at the mission for which we were born for. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, and I have a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and, and a future. Uh, as the Father begins to reveal to us uh, over the next few weeks the strategy of how the enemy is at work. When I was reading the book of Daniel uh, in, over the last few months, it was almost like I told, I told some people last week that I felt like I was almost reading from a teleprompter. It, it was almost like I would, I would read something in the book of Daniel and then God would say, this is what the enemy is going to do, write this down. This is what the enemy is doing, write this down. This is his plan against you, write this down. This is his plan against the next generation, write this down. God, God uh, almost like revealed to me by, by revelation the, the literal strategy of the enemy. And, and, and with, 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 with that truth in, in mind, then I, I need to do something about that. I, I need to put myself in a position where I begin to, uh, to stand against the, those, those plans of the enemy. I, I, that will keep me from falling into fear and hopelessness. If I, if I get busy being busy after chasing the intimacy of the Father, uh, when we learn these signs, uh, we will also learn how to respond to these signs. When we learn what the enemy's doing, we're going to learn how to respond to what the enemy's doing. This, these next few weeks, I believe, are really, really important for our church, really, really important for, for the body of Christ. I, I'm not at all saying that God's only pouring His Spirit out at Covenant, but I will tell you this, God is pouring His Spirit out at Covenant. God is doing some amazing things here right now in the lives of people. We're seeing people get saved and healed and changed and transformed. And I know that's going on in, in, in a lot of other churches. I talked to my, my friends at Pursuit. I know there's some friends of churches. I talked to my buddy Joy from Daystar last week. Uh, they're having an incredible transformation over at his church. I know I heard from Scott over at New Vision. They're having some transformation moments at his church. I'm just telling you that God is, is, is in a season of outpouring for the body of Christ. But in the, in the same time he's bringing that out porn, he's given us revelation of how to battle in the heavenlies. And, and we need to take heed. We need to, we need to recognize that we, are, we, we have been warned. It is time to re-engage in a way like you've 
or engage in a way like you've never been engaged before. Uh, God doesn't need you in a place of fear and hopelessness and and in a place where you you don't you don't know whether you're going or coming. God God needs you focused in this moment on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He needs you in a, in a worshipful life in a worshipful relationship with Him. He needs you walking in intimate places. I, I I know this to be a fact. When I am walking in intimate places of worship with the Father, I hear His voice more clearly. And God is screaming to the body of Christ, come back, hear me, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. I have things I need to tell you in this season that you need to hear in this season. And that's what this series is going to be about. Over the next few months, uh, we're going to outline exactly what the enemy's doing and exactly how we're to react to what he's doing. There, there's a whole generation of people who need for us to engage against a desperate enemy who's trying to kill us. And he's trying to destroy us and he's trying to deceive us with the, with the intense purpose of just stopping uh, the move of the body of Christ. And, and, and God is raising up his own standard in this moment. And he's saying, uh, you will not walk in victory. You are already a defeated foe. And, and, I, and I need our people. I need you guys that are listening uh, on your computer this morning, on your phone, whatever. I need you engaging in this moment because God's got some things he wants to say to us. So over the next few weeks, I'm asking you to please make plans to join in. If you're not, if you're not able to be here in person, keep, keep continuing to join in with us online because what God's got, what God has to say in this moment is, is of utmost importance. And I have an urgency in my spirit to tell you the things I'm supposed to tell you over the next week. So anyway, uh, thank you for coming and joining with us today. It, it matters to me. It matters to the Father. It matters to your life. It matters to your kids. It matters to your grandkids. God wants to teach you some stuff right now uh, that you didn't know before. He wants to bring a revelation to your life uh, of things that you didn't know before. He wants to bring an intimacy to your life like you've never walked in before. And, and, and I'm just inviting you to, to participate because right now, He's easy to find. He's made himself available to the church and the church needs to pay attention. We simply cannot sit this one out. It is time for us to engage like we never have before and I'm encouraging you to do so. So thank you so much again for today, for joining in with us. I speak God's blessing over you this week as you pick up his word, as you spend time in prayer. May you, may you touch the hem of his garment. So have a blessed week in the Lord and I'll see you next week. Right, thank you.